This summer, strap in as we go on a journey in the shoes of someone that is not a man. Oh no, he is a monster. Someone that will fade anyone in his path. Someone that ducks no smoke. This n is literally a blunt, a bong rip. And the way that this n ducks no smoke, you would think that he had four pairs of lungs. Some say he reminds him of Vegeta, and I'm like, hell no, that n takes too many L's. But this n here, he does nothing but win, and when he does lose, it just leads to him getting stronger, to him fading more people. Today, you are witnessing the trailer for Garo, the hero fader. Okay, so from that intro, you know what we are here today for. We are here to talk about Garo the Hero Fader because it does not matter who gets into this man's way, whether it's a hero, monster, etc. He will fade you if he feels like you are in his opposition. This man Garo beats throughout the season two of one punch man like they owe him money and yeah there's a ton of other funny things that happen in the season i'll talk about some of them briefly but we are really here to break down and analyze garo because the fades that he gives niggas will have you thinking that he's a barber right off the rip man his introduction is insane so we're in this like dark ass musty garage and there's a bunch of criminals around and i'm like okay what's going on you see the hero association guy the spokesperson in the front and he's talking to these criminals about how there's some problems prophecy and the world is going to get a boy now when i first seen this i was confused but i remember how the little nasty ass fortune teller yo shorty was over there looking like bobbity i ain't gonna lie a little nasty bitch she was talking about as a prophecy and some guy level threat was going to be like dangerous for the world so the hero association was trying to get ahead of that and i don't blame him if somebody told me that god was going to come destroy the world i would try to get prepared too so they start talking to these criminals and they're trying to like reason with them they're like look man we can compensate y'all we need help we got this amount of heroes we need more and i'm instantly thinking like damn this is like the war in the 1800s and 1700s when they needed people to help against like england and all that shit so they went to the people that they hated most black people to help them that's literally what's going on right now. It's like a bunch of racist founded fathers went to black people and was like, yo, we need y'all to be in the front lines because like we don't have enough. That's literally what's happening right now. They're going to criminals for help. And in the crowd, this man Speedo Sonic's there. Nobody cares about him. This is the same dude that got punched in his nuts last season. I do not give a flying f about Speedo Sonic. This man is obsessed with Saitama. You would have thought that that nigga got a bowling ball fetish the way that he's trying to always find this bald headed ass nigga. But you know who was in the crowd that's relevant? My nigga Garo. So he comes to the front, man, and, and I instantly see him. And I'm not gonna lie, I did get Vegeta vibes from him. But Vegeta's a bum, so I don't, I'm not comparing him to. Like, you got me. Baba. But hey, that's neither near or there. This man Garo starts talking to him, and he's like, bro. Y'all got me off fucked up. I'm not helping y'all. I'm on the side of the monsters. And I'm like, hold on. I had to pull the Drewski meme out. What do you mean by that? And he's explaining to them that he is not a human. And I'm like, well, nigga, you look like a human being to me. I'm not going to lie. When he said that shit, I was like, should I ask Garo for his pronouns? Because this nigga clearly not identifying as anything we know about. I don't want to call that nigga. He, he get mad at me. He's like, nah, nigga, I'm a monster. You feel me? I don't know what that nigga is. You feel me? Like, I, I don't know. But anyway, there's three A-rank heroes here behind the Hero Association spokes guy. Blue Fire, Heavy Tank, Loin Cloth, and Magic Trick Man. So they all behind this dude. First off, their names are stupid. Let, let's get that out the way. Heavy Tank, Loin Cloth? What, what are you from the Flintstones, nigga? What are we talking about? Blue fire? Nick, really? Blue fire? That's your name? Like, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Every time I see One Punch Man, y'all start thinking about, like, My Hero Academia and all these stupid-ass heroes that got dumb-ass powers. Except for One Punch, they do got cool powers. It's just their names are stupid. Blue fire? Nick? Magic trick, man? Nick. <sighs> If you don't get your fucking street performing at, yo, anyways. So at this point, Garo's talking about how he's gonna punish the A rank heroes that are there, and he's telling them to come at them all at once. Initially, you feel me? A nigga like me was like, pause, because that sounded crazy. But, anyways, the magic trick guy starts lunging at Garo, and I'm like, okay, we're about to get into it. And then he grabs this nigga by the collar. Like, I'm not gonna lie, he grabbed this nigga like he was bullying him in high school, bro. You ever seen any niggas that are just like clearly stronger than everyone else who so they grab him by the collar and yoke him up? That's what this nigga did. I felt like I was a kid again, and my mom was mad at me. Me, bro he grabbed this thing by the collar rocks his ass the loincloth dude comes to punch him this man garo weave hits this thing with a me right boom and then this blue fire nigga going be like oh yeah i'm disgusted by this like he's looking at garo like he's just mad he gets to shooting this blue fire and then i see this man garo holding this nigga's hand bro this man garo cut this nigga's 
armor. Made this nigga look like Mega Man right before our eyes. He's holding his hand in his hand. <laughs> Bars. He's like, yeah, your little petty tricks. And we see this like tube coming out of the dude's sleeve. I'm like, oh my God. Then all the criminals are like rooting them on and shit. This how you know this nigga's a demon though. After they do this, he's like, I don't know why y'all are cheering. Cause I'm about to body y'all too. The hero spokesperson starts looking around and, and then we see in an instant, every criminal in this room laid out on the ground. Bro, it looked like a meat packing factory. This nigga Garo punished literally everyone here. I can just imagine it now. This nigga Garo's probably working their ass. Meek, 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 weave, weave, meek, 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 punished all of these niggas. This was just his introduction. At this point, I knew that Garo was a complete demon. There is nothing that nobody is doing against this nigga. That's at least what I thought. I'm like, yo, this man might actually get with Saitama. And I was tripping, but I mean, shit, at the time, what did you expect me to think? Nigga did that without even getting a scratch. Well, I mean, they did scratch his cheek. But shit, y'all know what I mean. I think what makes this man Garo so devious is that this nigga is just hunting heroes bro i call him the hero fader for a reason he's just finding any heroes he can and he is punishing them he meets this little kid at some point that has a book it's like a hero almanac and it has all of these heroes in it and their weaknesses why would you give somebody like garo a book with weaknesses in it so this man garo's traveling one night in this little park i'm not gonna lie it was dark out here so i instantly was like garo what are you doing out here weird niggas in the park at night that's not a good look first thing i'ma think is yo is he on some predatory shit and he was nigga but he was a predator to these heroes so he runs into the tank top parade now i'm not gonna lie first of all how you got a whole click of niggas and tank tops and call them the tank top gang that is crazy like bro they got a mafioso for tank top niggas like bro if you don't get these dude bros the fuck out of here every one of these niggas look like they be benching 400 at the gym so he runs into these niggas and I'm not gonna lie, the tank top master, which is an S rank hero, was kind of working Garo at first. Garo goes to run into him and hit him. This man blocks because his whole body is massive. And then he rocks this nigga Garo hard as a bit. Like he literally hit him so hard, Garo was confused about what happened. He was like, yo, did this nigga just rock me? Bro, and anytime a nigga gets rocked like that and then stands back up and gives you a smirk, and his first thought is, did this nigga? just rock me that is scary because you know this nigga's about to work you so we learn at this point that garo has been holding back he hasn't been using his crushing like water palm shit at all bro and he didn't like to use it because it reminded him of his old master silver fang once i found out silver fang was this nigga's master i already knew that this nigga must have been a goat because silver fang is that nigga so at this point, he finds out Tank Top Master's attacks, starts reading them perfectly. And I'm like, bro, once you got a nigga like Garo, when he figures out how to beat you, there's nothing you can do about it. This man looks at all your attacks at that point like they're telegraph. You would have thought he was a fucking fortune teller. How mad would you be if you was Tank Top Master? You go to rocking it. And I'm not gonna lie, I thought he almost made contact. And then a nigga weaves you at the final second and hits you with a mean ass uppercut. Like, how are you gonna feel if that happens to you? Cause I'm not gonna lie, bro. If a nigga did that to me, I'ma shoot him. But guns ain't gonna work on a nigga like that, bro. I don't care how long your clip is, bro. It's not gonna work. What made this moment so fucked up though is he beats the shit out of these niggas and the tank tops i mean he punishes these jersey sword cast mates like all of these niggas look like their name is vinny i'm gonna <laughs> I'm be honest but what made it worse is what he did to moomin rider so after he punishes these niggas he grabbed moomin rider by the back of his helmet and i'm like yo what are you about to do and then he starts ramming this nigga moomin rider's head into concrete over and over again mat, 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 mat. so many times when you pick moomin rider's head back up his whole helmet was cracked bro this man moomin rider's face looked like a tenderized meat steak and i'm like why did you have to do that to him bro his power is riding a bicycle this nigga moomin rider just need to go do triathlons or something bro this don't make any sense because anytime he fights anybody he gets punished but Garo did too much here now this next situation that Garo got in was mad funny bro so he goes into this bar he knows that this man golden ball is in here and he's an a-rank hero this man golden ball in here joined his brew this man in here you feel me he probably had a long day he was like yeah i'm about to come in my little favorite little restaurant get me a nice cold beer you feel me chill out and all that but wrong nigga this nigga Garo was not playing with him so he walks into the restaurant he sees this nigga sitting there drinking his beer and this man golden ball is like yo like can i finish my brew and right before he can finish asking to finish his drink this man Garo splits his glass in half now i'm not gonna lie this man golden ball didn't look too impressive when he was sitting there he had this big ass varsity jacket on and this nasty ass white beanie and i'm like this nigga just like a civilian like well, why are you even trying to fight him but i mean he is an a-rank hero so they leave the bar they go into this alley first thing i'm thinking is why did you go in a dark alley with a nigga like Garo? did you just see what he did to your beer glass do you want to be next nigga? 
And then I seen this man pull out his weapon. I'm like, nigga, is this Usopp? This nigga got a big ass slingshot. I'm like, bro, what is that gonna do? Then he starts shooting these bullets though. And I'm like, damn, that shit fast as hell, bro. What the blah, blah, blah. So he ends up shooting this nigga in the leg, but I'm like, bro, you should aim for the head, bro. I felt like my Boy. Thanos in Infinity War. This nigga Garo tells him, like, bro, that's the only shot you had, nigga. You hit me in my leg, dumbass. So we start shooting these ricochet bullets. And I ain't gonna lie, at first I thought he was gonna smoke Garo. Cause the bullets was going crazy. But Garo was like, weave, weave, weave. Casually though. Like on some calm shit. It ain't even excited weaves. Nigga just like weave, weave, weave. But then right before he's about to punish this nigga after he catches all of his bullets, by the way, this big ass Abraham Lincoln mustache nigga comes jumping into the alley. This nigga's name is Mustachio. Bro, if you don't get the fuck out of here, it's me, Marty. If you don't get your Mario looking ass, bro, he jump into this fucking alley. And I'm like, bro, is he here to collect a star, nigga? Is he trying to save Princess Peach? Like, what's up with this big mustache bitch? So Mustachio coming here with his dumbass Zoro sword. And I ain't talking about Zoro from One Piece. I'm talking about my Zoro, the Hispanic. Bro, we coming here with this stupid ass rapier. And this nigga trying to fight Garo with it. Like, bro, if you don't get this number two pencil sword the fuck out of here. So he goes to lunge at this man Garo. And Garo's like, come on, bro. What are y'all what are y'all doing? They both trying to have a lecture with him talking about you can't keep doing this. Man, Garo was like, nigga, yes, I can. And I'm going to. I'm going to keep getting stronger the more I beat y'all. And I'm going to end up a guy level threat. This man is different. So Mustachio come at him crazy. I can't even hate on him. His sword play is crazy as hell he ends up using this tomboy attack which is like this big ass rainbow ass blast and the craziest thing happens this man garo counters it by impaling his own hand on the sword so he couldn't move bro stabbed his own hand through the sword skewered it turned his hand into a shish kebab to punish this nigga punch his mustachio in his face hard as a bitch his body just lay down in front of Baba Golden Ball. And I'm like, bro, at this point, Golden Ball, you gotta dip out. Ain't no way I would've stayed here with Mustachio being my friend or not. Like, nigga, your mustache can live to see another day. I might not be able to. Now, the next fight that he gets into isn't so, you know, spectacular. This is one of the few losses he takes in this season as he runs into Saitama while Saitama's shopping for a wig. Now, why the fuck is Saitama in here shopping for a wig? Like, I know he's trying to find a disguise to join the, like, whole martial arts tournament, but this nigga buys this nasty-ass wig. And I'm like, is this nigga about to put a zigzag on top of his head? He about to put a centric on his head? <laughs> like, this dumbass wig. Like a fucking cheerleading pom-pom, bro. I can't even lie to you. But anyways, he knocks the fuck out of Garo, bro. One shots him, and I'm like, that's crazy. But I mean, it made sense, though, with Saitama. Like, you know how that nigga be, bro. He's not playing with niggas. Side note of playing with niggas because, well, pause. That was crazy. But it reminded me of him playing games with King. I gotta talk about this nigga King for a second. I know this is the Garo video, but this nigga King is embarrassing. Like, bro, why is this nigga? King such a bum. Like when you first see him, you find out he's like a really high S rank hero. And I'm thinking this is crazy. Like, bro, he's the GOAT. He got the same scar as Shanks from One Piece. I'm like, yo, did Blackbeard meet this nigga too? Like, well, what happened? But when I see King, I'm like, oh, this man gotta be cool. Cause you hear this like engine revving up anytime he confronts somebody. And they call it King's engine. And I'm like, yo, this nigga even got his own OST. Like, bro, this nigga is sick. But then we find out that this nigga a bum he encounters this robot and he's like look man i'll fight you to my full extent but i gotta use the bathroom first i can't fight you on a full bladder so the robot's like all right bro you got 10 minutes he dips off to go to the bathroom and at this point i'm like okay what's about to happen so he gets into the bathroom and i'm like okay maybe he really just got a piss i was wrong the whole time bro this man in here shivering literally shivering he's like man these guys think i'm strong man i'm really a bum i'm a bum ass nigga He's like, bro, I literally don't deserve any of this. I never wanted to be a hero. But he starts talking about how he's never wanted to do anything and how he was just at the right place at the right time. Like, every time that they think he defeats somebody, it was somebody else doing it. And then he's like, yeah, y'all talking about the King's engine. Do y'all know what that is? That's just how fast my heart is beating. Bro, that noise that y'all hear, that's just my heart pit 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 and pattering, bro, because I'm a bitch. I felt bad for this man, King, at that point. I'm like, bro, you ain't here having a midlife crisis in a bathroom stall, bro. Like, how down bad can you get? And I know that has nothing to do with Garo, but come on, man. Fuck this nigga, King, man. So anyways, after Saitama punishes this nigga, Garo, the next time we see him happens when he encounters Metal Bat. So at this point, this man, Metal Bat, is protecting, like, this executive and his son. This man, big-ass centipede, uh, what is it, Elder Centipede, Centicharo, Churro, nigga. Man, whatever, man. Big ass centipede, bro. He, he, like a Pokemon. So this man Metal Bat trying to fight him, getting punished, bro. And this man Garo walking like, I heard Metal Bats around here. So if I find him alive, you know what it is. Just up in the stuff. And then this man Metal Bat flies next to Garo. And I'm like, well, isn't this perfect plot convenient timing? And at this moment, Metal Bat stands up and this man Garo wastes no time. He's like, you're about to fight me. Metal Bat's like, nigga, you don't see this big ass centipede behind me, bro? I don't got no time for that shit. Garo rushes at him, bro. And this man blocks it with his bat. I'm like, oh, hold on. This going crazy so this man metal bat i ain't gonna lie bro at first i'm like what are you about to do with a bat is your power just having a bat like bro what you about to try to get a home run like, 
like, what, what are we, what are you steal bases as your special ability? Like, what is going on? And then this man, Metal Bat, starts spinning this motherfucking helicopter ass bat around. <sighs> Call that shit a tornado. I'm like, hold on. So at this point, this man, Gara, was on some narrating shit. Because I'm not going to lie, he does start rocking this nigga metal bat but bro this man metal bat's attacks were hurting this man garl's hands it's like bro if you took a metal bat and you hit like a pole with it it's gonna start vibrating and hurt your wrist it's kind of the same premise that's basically what happened but this man garl started narrating what was going on at this time it's funny because metal bat was not playing with this nigga garl he's like oh you want to talk in the middle of fighting he goes to smack this nigga but his little sister's there big brother don't do it stop and this man Garo spare him because he like kids. Now, I ain't gonna lie, this man Garo might have to face them charges, yo. Like, we might have to get Chris Hansen, you feel me? Because, like, 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 like y'all seen in the Gus video, it, things just looking kind of weird for my man Garo, too. Because it's like, bro, you befriended the little kid with the weird bowl cut with the arm and that. Now, this little girl, you sparing him because of her, you feel me? And then he was in the park in the middle of the night. Like, wh what's going on? Chris Hansen finna pull up on this man Garo, like... <clears throat> So, Garo, I know that you were here hoping to see Tank Top Master tonight, but we just have a few questions for you. And this man, Garo, gonna be like, <clears throat> well, sir, what, what, what do you mean? I'm, I'm just out here in the park tonight. I'm just I'm just out here. Like, you know, I like to take strolls, you know, get my stamina up, get my oxygen pumping. Well, that's interesting, Garo, uh, because here we have some text messages that you were going to meet a little kid with a hero's almanac here tonight. What are you what are you going to meet him here for? Uh, are you guys going to read together or w w what's going on? Oh, man, I mean, like I said, I was just walking in the park, you know. I just was gonna meet the little kid. We was gonna read the, we're gonna read the book. Well, girl, I was gonna level with you, but you're here at 3 a.m. in the middle of a park and you're trying to meet a kid. I like, I ain't gonna lie, he might have to face them allegations. Now, I don't think girl really on no predator shit, but like, I don't know, man. Like, what's up with that? Now, this next fight is between him and Watchdog Man. First off, again, with the stupid names, Watchdog Man. And it's just some dude in this dog outfit that just sits on this, like, dog house all day. He doesn't move out of this vicinity. How did he get the rank 6S if he doesn't leave this area? What monsters was he fighting? Do monsters just come here to meet him? Like, bro, what is going on? And then you Watchdog. What are you watching? You watching this monsters kill people down the street? Because you ain't leaving this area. Mark this territory and don't want to leave. So this man, Garo, goes to fight him. And I'm not going to lie, he gets worse. This man, Watchdog Man, looks like Saitama, but in the dog outfit. And I'm really starting to think Watchdog Man might have broke his limiters or something, bro, because this man is going crazy. Fights this nigga on all fours, too. Like, bro, how much weirder can you get? I thought he was just cosplaying a dog, and maybe he would just walk on two feet. No, nah, this nigga is out here really moving like a dog. Bro, I'm out here looking like Brian from Family Guy and shit. I, I don't know, but he punishes this nigga. Gara, bro. It wasn't even close. I don't even need to talk about this one. Then we got Gara versus Saitama, too. Punish this nigga. Again, don't even gotta talk about it. I just wanna skip past it, cause we gotta get to this Shaq fight, bro. And I don't mean Shaq like from the Lakers, nigga. I'm talking about the Shaq, his hideout. This is where this man Garo fought. All the heroes in the world, basically. No, I'm just not all of them, but a lot of niggas. The nigga Death Gatling, Smile Man, Stinger, Chain and Toe, Wild Horn, Glasses, Shooter, and Gun Gun. First off, Gun Gun? What are we talking about here? I I'm not gonna lie, bro. And this man Megany, bro. Is it McGain? McGain? Megany? McGain? I don't know, bro. This nigga like gohan with the track suit on like but like, we instantly got to talk about him first because why the hell is gohan here then we got this six shooter ass nigga. he got these stupid ass revolvers and then we got a nigga with a tusk like spear a nigga shoot arrows a nigga that got a commodo joint with the chain and shit a nigga that got a big ass rubber hammer like the hammer look like if it hits you it'll go <laughs> like bro like one of them like rubber ducky hammers bro like <laughs> but anyways they get to scrapping bro and they're jumping this thing i'm not gonna lie bro i felt bad for him at first i'm like yo they're really out here working him he's already bandaged up so they start to punish in this nigga, but then he starts like using them against each other he basically starts fighting them and realizes he has to take them down kind of one by one limit their powers because the only reason they're winning is because they're working together power of friendship and all that but the funniest ass part was when he's fighting bro this nigga megany or mcgann whatever the gohan tracksuit nigga he gets to scrapping this man garo right yo garo turns his head to go talk to another nigga and gets punched dead in this shit. Bro, this man Gohan out here sneaking this, bro. He snuck this nigga. Bro, I ain't gonna lie, this nigga in a sneaking age. He big, big kiss this nigga with two quick ones. Backs up on some Floyd Mayweather shit. I'm like, bro, what is going on? So anyways, they get the scrap in his nigga. And they're still jumping them, bro. Working together. But then he starts using everyone against themselves. Like using their weapons to counter other people's weapons. He quickly takes down Gun Gun, the nigga with the big hammer, and the Commodore chain nigga, all at once. And he's like, all right, I got half of y'all. At this point, tracksuit Gohan is like, bro, this nigga punishing us he throws rocks at him i'm like nigga, what are you what are you a fake earthbender like what are you doing so he throws some pebbles at this nigga he grabs the pebbles with his hands uses them to take out the nigga with the arrows i'm gonna call that nigga legolas <laughs> then he picks up roots from the ground bro this nigga 
out here using vegetation against these niggas uses the roots whips the fuck out of him then he catches up to go high track suit starts rocking his ass do, 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 do. Me, 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 me. bro this is the craziest shit ever bro this nigga garo beat this nigga track suit gohan out of a flashback bro this man was having a flashback about how saitama inspired him and this man garo didn't let him finish it right before he got to the good part of the flashback he rocked him he Punch this nigga out of a flashback, bro. Then he's fighting the nigga with the staff, yo. He's hitting him nigga with the meanest uppercuts. Got this nigga levitating. Doop, 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 doop. This man Gatlin, bro, he uses death attack. Turn into a skull on his face and shit. Shoots this nigga. And then Garo's using his fist to block it all. Protects him and the shack that's behind him. Once again, protecting the kid. I'm just saying, bro. He beating him allegations. I'm just saying. Man, so at this point, he punishes literally everybody, bro. Now, the last thing that I got to talk about before we end this Baba Boy video is the last fight, bro. And even though he lost this fight, <sighs> bro, man, I just had to talk about it because this nigga Silver Fang is the GOAT. So he ends up fighting Genos at first. And we all know Genos is just a fucking L, bro. Literally an L ass nigga. He ends up using Watchdog Man's style that he saw earlier to fight Genos. But the fight gets interrupted by Bang and Bomb. Now, I ain't gonna lie, when I seen their names, I instantly thought Bing Bong. He got to hold you. But this man, Bang, was punishing this nigga, bro. He's over top of this nigga, Garo, like, make, 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 make. And this man, Garo, try to run on all fours at this other hero. Bomb catches him. Psych. Boom. Hits him with a hip check. At this point, I'm like, oh, man, they're punishing this nigga. Now, Garo look kind of gross right now. I ain't gonna lie. His hair is red from all the blood, but his eye is like, I think he busted a blood vessel. The nigga eye look like he got pink eye. I don't gonna lie. Look like he died with some dirty coochie. But they're a double team in this nigga. Literally punishing this nigga. And it gets to a point where Garo was like, bro, I'm not giving up no more, nigga. Y'all niggas got me Baba Booey. So he gets mad when they go to Baba Booey and like finish the attack. He starts remembering how these kids were making fun of him and he levels up again. And he uses this like clap. He's like, and then it kind of like separates him. The ground breaks and he starts like charging up. I'm like, niggas, you get some tips from like tracks you go around. Like, what happened? So he starts charging. He's like, ah! starts yelling. And right before these niggas about to finish him, this dumbass nigga Phoenix man comes to grab him. Fucking Ho O from Pokemon comes and picks him up. Bro, this man Garo is literally a demon. Every time I see him do anything, I'm like, God damn, nigga. Who else are you going to fade? Garo was that type of nigga that will fight anybody, bro. It reminds me of Yusuke, bro. You remember when Yusuke was fighting that one bitch? Speaking of Yusuke, I'm working on that video too, by the way. I know y'all are waiting on it, but that, that's my favorite character. It's going to take me some time. But you remember he's fighting that one bitch with Kuwabara, and Kuwabara's like, I don't hit women. And that nigga's like, we're in the middle of a fight. I don't care if it's a woman, a baby, or someone's grandma. I'll still beat her up. That's this nigga Garo in a nutshell. He will fade literally anyone, except for kids, because he's on some predator shit.